Welcome back to the channel guys. On today's video, we're gonna do some custom stain matching and probably do a quick tour to what I do and make some suggestions on how you can do it yourself without the whole setup. And let's get started. So basically what I have here is two stain samples. These are the desired colors that we're gonna achieve. And this is the raw piece of maple. This is maple door, five piece maple door. And these are the starting samples. Basically, this is the color of the wood, uh, regular good grade maple. And these are my colorants that I'm gonna be working with. So basically, you need some sort of a system that you're working with. And in my case, I have waterborne stain dyes and pigments. These are micronized pigments on the water base, in the water base system. So basically, the driver is the water and the micronized pigments are made out of whatever. So this is Milesi system, one of these Italian brands. You, you can use whatever you have available. There's Circa, Envirolac that makes stains, ICA and a lot of other brands. You just have to do a little quick research and then find local distributors that have pigments and dyes available. I prefer waterborne system because of the way it um, reacts and works with wood that we work with. And let's get started. Uh, with a matching process. These are just a few of the colorants that I have. This, these are the basic colorants that we use. We have black dye and black pigment. They're different because of the way they work. Dye goes deeper into the grain and um, pigment kind of like stays on, on top, reflecting the surface. So it gives me more of a uniform finish and also the colors themselves are slightly different. This is more of a dark greenish, bluish black. This one is more of a neutral black black. This is red, this is yellow, this is blue, orange, and the white. And this guy is the um, binder. Binder is basically glue, something that makes your pigment stick to the surface and doesn't let it slide and glide along the surface, you know, going deep into the grain. So that's the glue. Also, I need some water. Water is my driver. I'm gonna show you how much I use. Let's start with the formula. So I need a piece of paper. All right, so here's my first initial mix. I added very little black, very little red, some yellow, seven grams, and then water and binder. And this is the mixture that I got. Somewhat yellowish, somewhat reddish. And I got a little bit on the piece of paper just to see uh, the base color. Apparently it's gonna be a lot different on the wood. So we'll do our first try. For staining, I always use these affordable cup liners so we can replace them all multiple times a day. And uh, these came from AliExpress, our solid colors, when we need it to be super clean. We use 3M PPS system, it has a little adapter that goes on the gun. This is the 3M brand right there. Liners, when it gets dirty or when you don't need it anymore, you can just dispose the lid and the liner. Use this liner in the cup and do my first uh, pass, see what it looks like. I use very small needle. This one is 1.4. If you're into these gravity guns, you know what the size mean. Uh, it's the size of the uh, needle and also the size of the nozzle. So 1.4 is a perfect size. I dialed in my air on there and on here as well. So it's very little air coming out. Basically, you don't need much air to atomize it. You want your sprain to be somewhat grainy. And also I dialed back my material adjustment on the gun. So when the spring comes out, it's atomized, but still not super atomized because you want the stain to land on the surface um, with a very little air pressure. Stain particles disperse and get absorbed into the wood. When it first lands, it looks a little blotchy, but then as it gets absorbed into the wood, as you can see, it gets very nice and consistent. This is my first pass. You can see on the masking tape, because of the binder, it's still somewhat blotchy, but in the wood, it looks a lot more consistent. Water loves wood and wood loves water. Incorporates really, really well with the grain. Okay, so this is my first pass. First pass is completely dry. So I'm gonna put it in front of my infrared panel. You can just wait and see another sample being, being dried and it's almost ready to go, it's almost dry, but I just wanna make sure that it's completely dry so I don't flood 
the surface with my second pass. All right, put a little closer. Sometimes I run that little fan right there to help speed up the drying process, but this is pretty much ready for my second coat. Okay, let's do another coat. This is it, that's two passes. Still far away from the sample, as you can see, not, not any close. I definitely need a lot more black and maybe some red. That's why I taped it all, so I have a lot of tries to make. I'm just gonna peel off this layer. Uh, as soon as this guy dries, I'm gonna mask it off so I don't mess with it. And also I see the history of changes. So this is gonna be my second one. I'm gonna dry this one while this is drying. I'm gonna go back to the mixing station and continue adding pigments. So I'm gonna add, you guys can decide for yourself. Basically, you just have to have a good eye. You have to decide for yourself what you want to add to it. The consistency I like a lot. You know, it's pretty uniform. I don't see a lot of grains, just like on the sample, but the color definitely needs to be tweaked. So I'm gonna do a little more red and a little more black because they're pretty strong compared to yellow. As you can see, I added very little, but that's needed so I can add more in the future and uh, I don't have to dilute my material. Otherwise, if I add too much red and too much black to, to begin with, it's gonna be very hard to go back. Now it's kind of easy. I just have to add some more as it could have been, but now it's a lot easier to play with it. Okay, second pass. And you can see it's not that much of an ear, so this does look a little granular. All right, let's see what we got. So this is two passes. Two passes and not enough of a color is good because you can always add more and make your stain more intense rather than getting it too far. So this looks pretty good. It's getting there. Just so you guys can see the progress. Here's the first sample. It's a lot yellower and this one is a lot closer. So we're moving into the right direction. It's still a little greenish, but it's wet. As it dries, it's gonna change its color slightly. And also when we add our clear coat, it's gonna change the color as well. It's gonna pop and make it a little deeper. So what I'm gonna be doing here is, I feel like I need a little more red and a little more black. Maybe I'll do one more pass just to be sure because it could be, it could very well be the right tonality, the right color when I add my third coat. With my sun system, the infrared panel, it's dry now. I'm pretty sure it's dry now. It's pretty hot right in front of it. It is looking pretty close, maybe a little more red. Also the uh, lighting here messes up. When you see it in reality with your own eyes, not through the lens of a camera, it definitely looks a little different. So, but you can see it's still too light. Uh, we're gonna add one more pass and see how it looks. All right, so this is my third pass. And just so you guys can see the progress, I've taped off a little bit of a two pass color, two pass variation. And you guys can see we're getting really close. So what does it mean to me? I think we, we're still a little far away from the reddish of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some red to it. Three passes did pretty good job. I do feel like I need to add a little more red and then I'm gonna do a clear coat to seal it and see what, what the final finish looks like with the clear coat on it. Cause clear does change the color. Sometimes it adds a little bit of a amber hue to it. Sometimes it makes it a little deeper, but it does change the color. So after I do the red, few drops of red, I'm going to spray it with a clear coat. Before you add your colorant, you always have to make sure it's very well mixed. Pigment, the heavy parts of the pigment tend to settle down and uh, always zero down your scale. So you have accurate measurements. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add somewhere around 0 0.2, 0 0.32. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna write it down to 0 0.3 two of a gram and maybe a little more of a black as well because I want more opacity, more intensity of the stain so we can get away with less passes. That was 0 0.34, maybe a little more red as well because we just went a little almost. I think we're good with that. I'll just close these little lids. So it stays nice and wet. And gonna give it a little mix. 
Close the lid. And do another pass. Do another sample, actually. Not one more pass. We're going to be starting from scratch on another piece of clean wood. All right, I'm ready to go with my next sample, my next section. We're a lot closer to the tonality uh, in terms of reddishness and brownishness. This is just the first pass. While I'm working with the stain sample, guys, I have the solid color being matched. So this infrared catalytic system helps a lot in terms of curing, drying, speeding up the process. If you own a shop, this is absolutely the game changer. We have two of them. All right, this is dry. Do another pass. Everything in the online mode. Okay, one more pass. It's pretty close, pretty close. We might need to do another pass or try both. This two pass version and the three pass version. After I dry it, I'm gonna mask it off and then I'll do clear coat. And then we will see uh, whether this was enough or the more stain option is better. Because uh, like I said before, clear coat does change the color, the final color. I wanna see both options in case of the second pass, the two pass co combination. Without the infrared, it dries pretty quickly as well, but you know, maybe 30 seconds more, maybe a few minutes more. Yeah, this is pretty close, pretty close. All right, I'm gonna do another pass, third pass, I'm gonna mask it off and put my clear coat on. All right, we're ready to have a look at the final results. This has been about an hour or so. I let my final coat dry. I did my seal coat first and a light sand and another coat. So this is final result. This is pretty close. Our client doesn't want it to be exactly the same. It's not part of the existing project. We're not matching like the stain. So we have to stain a door that's right next to existing doors. So this is good enough for us. As you guys can see, we went from this yellowish, yeah, it's pretty yellow, right? To then to the brown, to redder, greener, and then to redder again, and then a little, a little deeper in terms of tonality. And then we'll get pretty much thing on. It's still a little fresh, so you can see a little more of a depth, but the color is pretty close. Um, also, you can see the definition of the crane. It's not as obvious, so we kind of like, it's, it's really hard to see, but you can kind of see these strikes, these uh, lines, which is part of the crane, part of the maple. And here on the sample, we do see it a little as well, but not much. So this is gonna be very consistent, no blotchiness on the um, on the doors when we get you know a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna do the second one. You guys now know how to do light brown. And then this is a lot deeper, a lot darker, but you have to find the base, the, uh, the colors that you're going off of. And I'm assuming in this situation, I'm gonna be going off of the same red and uh, black. So there's not much of a blue, green, yellow, or anything like that. As you can see, this is pretty red. So I might as well continue working on this one and just, you know, do more black, more red and see what it, uh, what it looks like. And also I had to put my stain <clears throat> on a bigger sample. It looks pretty good. This is just the stain with no clear coat. As you guys can see, my stain wood looks pretty dead flat because there's no clear coat. And as soon as it <coughs> goes on, it'll change the color slightly, but the, um, the tonality pretty damn close. Okay, it's time for the clear coat. We have two component acrylic polyurethane in the can. Let's get to it. Well, there we have it, guys. I got two samples done. Actually, I did a lot more today, but these are the ones that uh, we we're working with today. The brown one turned out pretty close. This purplish one is pretty close as well. It's brown purple, same idea. Um, I use the same colorants and got these great results. Now you guys know how to do color matches. All you have is a set of pigments and dyes. You can actually build, um, build up your system and add more colorants to it, have more options and it's easier to do your matches. But now you have a good idea on how to start, how to get started and do your color matches with these basic pigments.
If you have any questions, as always, drop a comment down below and make sure to watch this next video right over here. We'll see you there. Cheers.